In 1917, during World War I, Germany and France were still fighting over the land at the border. The war was only for a couple of hundred meters of land but it took many young soldiers. Before the bodies of German soldiers who died were buried, their uniforms, shoes, and helmets were first removed and then taken to a special launderette which would then be sewn into new uniforms for use by young soldiers who will register for the next war. On the other hand, in North Germany, there were four new teenagers arriving at their school, named Paul, Albert, Ludwig, and Franz Paul. At that time, Paul told his friends that apparently, his mother didn't allow him to join the army. During those years in Germany, teenagers at their age were allowed by the school to join the army as long as they were approved by their respective parents. His friends mocked him because of his story. Franz then suggested Paul falsify his mother's approval letter so that the four of them could go to war together. In school, before submitting the letter of approval, the principal gave a motivational speech to encourage his students who were going to war. There was no expression of fear there. The innocent students continued to smile happily while hearing the principal's speech. They didn't know how cruel and terrible it was on the battlefield. The reason they want to go to war was also not for the sake of defending the homeland, but only so that they can be seen as a cool person in the eyes of the public. After they got their uniform, the four of them went to the battlefield along with tents of other soldiers without knowing that maybe, it will be their last smile. When they arrived at the camp, a doctor blocked their way and then told the soldiers to get off of the truck because they would use it to transport the wounded soldiers to the hospital. After many kilometers of walking, suddenly there was a bombing attack. The commander ordered everyone to wear their gas masks, but unfortunately, Paul was late in following instructions. He was punished and had to continue wearing his mask without being allowed to take it off until they reached the base. When they arrived at the base, they met the vice commander named Stanislaus Katsinski. Different from the last commander, Kat was a nice man and didn't seem to be a strict person like the commander. That night, the enemy was still nowhere to be seen. When Paul and Albert were on guard, they heard the sound of footsteps coming towards them, but instead of being alert, Paul was very happy. He felt that it was his time to show his shooting skills in front of Albert. Unfortunately, the shot missed and instead triggered the enemy to return the favor and attack them. Luckily, the bullet only hit Paul's helmet. Due to the incident, Paul was shocked. Suddenly, an enemy attack came. The commander ordered all his men to take cover. In a shelter, they could only remain silent. Kat explained that these kinds of attacks always happened every night. The enemy soldiers moved slowly approaching the base and attacked the unguarded soldiers. They couldn't do anything but stay hidden because their artillery was not advanced enough to fight back. They could only take cover until the attack was over. In the midst of this tense situation, a panicked soldier asked to go home saying that he regretted going to war. Suddenly, their base was attacked and things went chaotic. Everyone ran to save their lives but they couldn't do much to respond to the attack. As a result of the attack just now, the base was ruined, burying Paul and all of his fellow soldiers. The next day, Paul who was still buried was rescued by Albert and the other soldiers. Paul didn't expect that the war could be so traumatizing. While he was taking a break, Kat gave him bread to fill his stomach. Soon, the commander came and ordered everyone to collect the identification necklaces of the soldiers who had died. In the necklaces, there were names and addresses to give to their respective families. While collecting the necklaces, Paul accidentally stepped on Ludwig's glasses. In a panic, he immediately looked for his friend, and how surprised Paul was when he saw Ludwig's dead body lying between the corpses. He was so sad but realized that there was no time to cry. He stood back up and continued to collect the necklaces of other soldiers who had fallen. Now, Paul had realized that his nightmare had just begun. One year had passed and Paul seemed to be used to living in the raging war. One day, when Paul was out for a walk together with Kat, they saw a small farm near the forest. It had been a long time since they had eaten something nice so they planned to steal livestock from that place. Kat entered the farm while Paul stood guard outside. After waiting for quite some time, suddenly, a gunshot was heard from the inside. Turned out, the farmer found Kat stealing their goose and tried to shoot him. Thankfully, they managed to run away and return to the base safely. At the base, Kat called Paul, Albert, Franz, and a soldier named Jaden to taste the goose he cooked. They were all very happy as if it was their first time tasting good food. During their meal, they joked around laughing and trying to comfort each other so they could forget the never-ending war. The next day, while peeling potatoes, the five soldiers saw three women passing by. Since they had not talked to or even seen a woman for a long time, they were so enchanted. That among them, only Franz was the one who dared to approach and escort the three women home. 
Seeing the bravery of his friend, Albert was jealous. That afternoon, when Paul was writing a letter to his family at home, Kat came asking for help to read a letter from his wife. In the letter, Kat's wife wrote that she missed her husband and she couldn't wait for Kat to come home so they both can go to their child's grave. After reading the letter, Kat vented his feelings that he had failed to be a father. When his child was sick, even until death took him, he never had the time to visit because he was at war. Nobody wanted to be there. They were all trapped by the government's promises who said that they would pay them massively for joining the fight, but in reality, the salary for sacrificing their lives was far below their expectations. They could barely provide themselves with their salary. Even the high-ranking generals were just busy giving orders without wanting to fight along with them. Hearing Kat's story made Paul understand how Kat felt about the war. At night, after returning to the camp, Franz told the story of the girls that he took home that afternoon. She gave him a gift. A handkerchief. He then told Paul to sniff the handkerchief so if somehow, they lose the fight, at least, Paul would still be able to know the scent of women. While laughing, Paul sniffed the handkerchief. The next day, Paul, Albert, Franz, Kat, and Jaden were ordered to find the missing 60 soldiers after the last attack by France at an abandoned railroad. While looking for them, Kat smelled a remnant of the poisonous gas that France used during the war. He was sure that if the soldiers survived, they would have looked for a hiding place nearby. They all then entered the nearest warehouse, then scattered through every room until when Paul entered one room. He was surprised to see the 60 soldiers lying dead on the floor. Paul screamed to call for his friends. When Kat saw the condition of the corpses in front of him, he knew that those soldiers who were lifelessly lying in front of them met their death by inhaling a fatal amount of poisonous gas. That night in the German base, the war general of Germany was angry. He was annoyed with the decision that the government made by humbling themselves to France and begged for the war to stop. Even though Germany did not have tanks or great combat equipment, he still believed that his troops would be able to win the war. The general then ordered his assistants to prepare for tomorrow's attack. For him, peace was only for weak people. The next morning, the delegacies between Germany and France met on a train. One of the German delegacies named Matthias begged the French to stop their tanks from attacking their troops because they had lost way too many soldiers over the battlefield. The French delegacies then gave him a folder containing several agreements that the Germans should sign. The French give Germany 72 hours to negotiate, and as long as the negotiations had not been legally signed, the war would continue as usual. Meanwhile, on the battlefield, the German soldiers were preparing to start an attack, but not a single soldier looked enthusiastic. Deep down, they were very fed up and hoped that this war would end soon. They wanted to go home and be together with their families again. When everything was ready, they started the attack. In the middle of the war, France's tanks showed up and tore apart the formation of the Germans. Despite their limited and patch-up weapons, they still fought against the tanks, but the tanks were not a match for them. The bullets barely did a scratch and the tanks continued to crush the bases and sent German soldiers running for their lives. France soldiers joined the attack with their more advanced weapons, including a flamethrower that they used to burn alive the remaining German soldiers they could find. In the midst of panic, Paul saw with his own eyes that his friend, Albert, was burned alive by French soldiers. Paul was very scared and kept running back to the trench. There, the commander ordered Paul to hurry up carrying as much ammunition as he could carry. There was no time to grieve. After collecting as much ammunition as he could, Paul continued to run away until accidentally, while running with heavy ammunition in his back, Paul tripped over a rock and fell into a hole. Afraid an opposite soldier would find him, he played dead. Suddenly, he realized that a French soldier was standing behind him, ready to shoot him dead. Luckily, another German soldier shot the French soldier first. He fell into the hole and Paul took his chance to kill him. He grabbed his knife and stabbed the French soldier many times. When the French soldier was dying, Paul began to realize and regretted his decision to kill him. Without him realizing it, the war had turned him into a heartless killer demon. When Paul checked the French soldier's identification, it turned out that the person whom he had just killed was the same as him. They both had families and were caught up in this war. There was nothing Paul could do but keep apologizing for what he had just done. On the other hand, on the train where the negotiations were held, the German delegacies protested because the contents of the agreement letter from France did not make sense and seemed to corner Germany. 
If they signed the letter, it was as if Germany had surrendered from France, so it would be better if the ceasefire was cancelled, or in other words, the war would continue. Even if Germany lost, they would lose in honor and would still be feared by other countries. Hearing that, Matthias reminded them that they were not arguing about who is the stronger but to save the lives of thousands of young German soldiers who were fighting desperately on the battlefield, even though they know that the war was impossible for them to win. After the negotiation between the German delegacies ended, both countries' delegacies met back for the negotiations. During the negotiations, Matthias said that government would try their best to fulfill the condition from France. In front of the French, Matthias and two other German delegacies signed the agreement letter. After the agreement was signed, the French said that from the next day, on November 11th, exactly 11 at noon, the war between Germany and France was declared over. Meanwhile, in the camp, Paul was confused about why the soldiers were cheering and congratulating each other. One of the soldiers there told him that the government had broadcasted that the war between them and France would end the next day at 11. Soon, they would all be able to go home and meet each other's families. Paul was very happy but there was an important thing he had to do, which was to look for the whereabouts of his friends. Paul went to the treatment room. There were lots of wounded soldiers who had not been treated lying while bearing their injuries. Among the soldiers, Paul saw Jaden. Sadly, Jaden said that because his leg was badly injured, the doctor had to amputate it. Jaden then gave him Franz's handkerchief and told him that in the battle earlier, Franz had died. Once again, Paul had lost his best friend. Jaden said that rather than being sad, Paul would rather be grateful because he was still alive and was not injured in the slightest. He had to be grateful that he was not disabled like Jaden. When Jaden started to calm down, Paul went away to look for food to fill his stomach. On his way to the kitchen, Paul who was still beaten by his friend's death tied Franz's handkerchief around his neck to tribute to his friends. When he arrived at the kitchen, everyone was yelling for food. That was the time Paul saw Kat. He was relieved to know that Kat was still alive. After they both got a bit of potato soup, they went to Jaden's place and then told him to eat. Before he started digging on his plate, Jaden asked for a fork and spoon, not to eat but to stab himself in the neck. When he was dying, Jaden said that he would rather die than have to live as a disabled. Paul and Kat couldn't say anything while watching their friend kill himself. On the other hand, the German war general and his assistants were eating some sumptuous food, far different from the soldiers outside who had to fight over potato soup. The general said he was annoyed by the decision that the government preferred, which was to surrender to France when there were still many young Germans who wanted to become an army. The general then ordered his assistants to gather all the soldiers in the yard the next afternoon. The next day, when Paul woke up, he was confused when he saw Kat staring outside. Kat said that that day was the most beautiful since he went to the war. For the first time in four years of fighting, that day, he didn't hear a single sound of gunshots. Then went for a walk to celebrate that freedom. Along the way, Kat said that he couldn't wait to go home. He wanted to kiss and hug his wife tightly. Kat also advised Paul that it was better for him to continue his studies so that in the future, he could become a great person. On their walk, they accidentally passed the farm where they stole a goose before. With a joking tone, Kat said why they both didn't steal before going home. Laughing, Paul agreed. It was Paul's turn to come in this time while Kat guarded outside. Inside, because the geese were still gosling, Paul decided to just steal the eggs, but again, they were caught by the owner of the farm. He and his son tried to shoot them. Thankfully, they managed to get away, but in the middle of the road, the egg that Paul was carrying broke. They rushed to collect the eggs that were pouring from Paul's pocket and take turns drinking it. Later, while Kat was peeing in the forest, the son of the farm owner showed up while pointing a gun at him. Shortly thereafter, Paul heard a gunshot and immediately checked the situation. He saw Kat walking and seemed okay. Paul was relieved but suddenly, Kat collapsed. Turned out, he was shot in his left stomach. In panic, Paul rushed to carry him back to the camp. Unfortunately, when the doctor in the camp checked on his condition, he said that there was nothing he could do to save him. Paul was shocked to hear that. All his friends were dead, leaving him all alone. Paul had watched all his friends one by one die before his eyes. While contemplating, the general's assistant came and then ordered all the soldiers to gather in the courtyard. All the soldiers were finally gathered in the yard. The general announced that they would all be going home soon, but before that, he wanted them to return to the battlefield for the last time to seize the border. Before the clock showed 11, the war was not ended yet. He didn't care, even if that last fight would be worth thousands of his soldiers. The most important thing for him was that the Germans succeeded in seizing their land. Hearing the general's speech, all the soldiers were upset. 
They were upset about the command they had no choice but to obey. Some soldiers who refused the orders or fled were immediately executed. While walking to the battlefield, Paul asked the time to a young soldier next to him, the soldier answered that it was 10.45, which only means that it was only 15 minutes left before 11. Only a few minutes left before the war was officially ended. The only thing the soldiers had in mind was to stay alive until it was time. After getting ready, the Germans began to attack. In the middle of the war, Paul saw the young soldier whom he asked before being attacked by the French soldier. He immediately helped him. Paul and the soldier fell into the French bunker. For a moment, they both stopped while looking at each other, waiting for time, hoping that the clock could move faster, but suddenly, another French soldier appeared and stabbed Paul right in the heart. Exactly a few seconds after Paul's heart was stabbed, the clock showed 11, and the war was officially ended. The commander's voice was heard yelling to the soldier to stop the fight. Paul was very sad because, in the final seconds, his heart had to be stabbed. With the last strength he had, Paul slowly got out of the bunker. Outside, he could breathe the peace in the air. No more sounds of guns, explosions, or war cries. The war had finally ended. On the other hand, the German general was silent listening to the sound of the clock. He was silent not because he was sad that many of his troops had died, but he was silent because he was disappointed that the Germans had failed to seize the land. Sometime, later the assistant general was seen coming to the battlefield. He told his soldiers including the young soldier Paul had saved to collect the identification necklaces of the German soldiers who had fallen. One by one, the young soldier kept collecting necklaces until suddenly, his footsteps stopped. He saw the body of the man who saved him sitting stiffly in front of the bunker. Paul died following his friends. Paul was finally freed from war, freed from the cruel world. He gave his last salute to Paul by taking Paul's handkerchief and then tying it around his neck. <laughs>